Member for Oak Bay Gordon Head. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and uh, thank you to the previous speakers for highlighting um, some of the issues I too, Honourable Speaker, would like to speak to and against in, in uh, similar cases. Uh, first off, Honourable Speaker, I, I do wish to thank uh, the Minister of Natural Gas uh, Development for making staff available for a briefing uh, today, which we found very helpful in explaining some of the um, rationale behind the uh, royalty uh, amendments that I will discuss later. Uh, Honourable Speaker, as was mentioned by the member from Nanaimo, this um, Miscellaneous Statutes Amendment Act, like previous acts, is always interesting because there's a potpourri of topics in here, some of which some members in this, legisl in this House will approve. Others, some me me members in this House will not approve. There's many different, different angles that one could take with this bill. And one, in voting a yes or no on the second reading, one has to weigh the pros and the cons. And one might actually think that the ways of dealing some of, with some of these are at the committee stage, which I certainly will explore in more detail um, some of the ideas there. There are a couple of uh, uh, sections that concern me quite profoundly, Honourable Speaker, but I will start, and I want to preface, that there is one section here that is actually good, good, uh, is good and something that I find very easy to support, and it's an election promise, Honourable Chair, uh, Speaker, that the BC Liberals will be able to keep. The irony here should not be lost on many people. I, Honourable Speaker, have been serving in this I've had the privilege of serving in this legisl legislature for two years. In that two years, I've heard a lot about the 1990s, Honourable Speaker. I've heard it referenced time and time again about what happened in the 1990s. Well, Honourable Speaker, did you know that in the 1990s, the Provincial Symbols and Honours Act was brought, to, brought in place? And Honourable Speaker, guess what is there in Section 19? Of that Act, Honourable Speaker, Section 19 states this The Lieutenant Governor and Council may award the BC Medal of Good Citizenship to recognize persons who have acted in a particularly generous, kind, or self sacrificing manner for the common good without expectation of reward. Honourable Speaker, this was one of the prime announcements in the throne speech that government would actually bring forward a BC Medal of Good Citizenship that, Honourable Speaker, already exists. <laughs> this has got to be one of the most bizarre moments, Honourable Speaker, for me in this legislature to see the hubris, the narcissism of a government that thinks that it's okay to make a big deal about bringing in a medal that's been on the books for almost 20 years. It's, it's, it's truly, truly, I mean, Honourable Speaker, you can't make this stuff up. It's happening in BC politics here in the House. And you know what, Honourable Speaker, what is so sad about this is British Columbians are paying the price. British Columbians are paying the price for a government that clearly does not have a legislative agenda this session apart, Honourable Speaker from desperately trying to fulfill its election promise about LNG. And as we watch one after another after another of the big players in the LNG market cite what I have been saying for two years, Honourable Speaker, the growing glut of natural gas, the prices dropping, Japan's bringing on nuclear reactors again, Australia is well ahead, companies are merging, price of oil is dropping, and BC, rather than recognizing, Honourable Speaker, that we are late players in this game, that we do not have a competitive advantage, Honourable Speaker, that we, we will maybe one day find a use for this natural gas. And I see some small little additions here, which you know, I call the methanol and the refining amendments, where there's some kind of ideas that perhaps we should do something in case it doesn't pan out, and there are other projects that we might go for. But, Honourable Speaker, what this government is doing with amendments, two of them in this, in this Act, is continuing this generational sellout, which my friend from Nanaimo, uh, uh, Couchins, 
Now, now I'm on North, North Cowich, and I described it as a generational sellout. But, Honourable Speaker, I cannot take credit for the term multi generational sellout that goes to the member from Nanaimo North Couch. And, but, Honourable Speaker, it's far beyond that. We see this taking another step because not only are we entering into letting the minister enter into royalty agreements that will hamper future generations, not only government, future generations by irresponsible promises made by a government that had no idea what it was doing during an election campaign except for offering a message of hope wrapped in hyperbole in a desperate attempt to get elected. Say anything, we're not going to get elected, but let's hope we get a few seats. And lo and behold, Honourable Speaker, we have majority over here of a government that does not know what it's doing on this file that has become an embarrassment internationally on the LNG file. And we've watched company after company after company look at us and say, what's going on? And here we now have, Honourable Speaker, in this bill, the greatest, the most sincere, serious insult to future generations that you could have, which is saying, we are going to lock you into royalty rates with one company, that we're also going to forget Municipal Charters Acts, we're going to allow, we're going to go over that too, and we're going to do what we can to write legislation so this one company may, may, possibly, perhaps, if things are go well, make an investment decision by June of this year. And they're the only one thinking of doing it. Honourable Speaker, this, the level of irresponsibly here, I cannot underestimate it. British Columbians, Honourable Speaker, should be walking in the streets over this legislation. I know they're not going to pay attention to miscellaneous statutes amendment acts. Buried within that, Honourable Speaker, is not only an intergenerational or multi-generational sellout, it's a historic one. It's a historic sellout of the rights of British Columbians and future generations to gain value from our natural resources to foreign multinationals. Honourable Speaker, it's a very sad day in British Columbia if we were to pass the very relevant sectors in here. But sadly, as this government no longer listens to constituents, to small business owners, we see it in the liquor legislations, to the opposition, to independent members, they are marching to the beat of their own uh, drum, Honourable Speaker, because they think that by being elected as a majority, they have carte blanche to do whatever they want with no accountability. But, Honourable Speaker, there will be accountability. When British Columbians do realise this, and we can see it happening around the province, there will be accountability in 2017 for this multi-generational, historic sellout that is continuing here in British Columbia. Honourable Speaker, let's move directly to Section 23, the Port Edward Tax Agreement. Now, where is this coming from? The Port Edward Tax Agreement. For those riveted at home to the debates that are happening now, Port Edward is near Prince Rupert, and it's where Petronas is and, and BG and Shell in the area where there was going to be a LNG facility. It's an area where there used to be a, a vibrant pulp mill, but of course that shut down because you know, we, we're not um, nurturing our forest industry. Instead, we're, we're natural gas. It's LNG or nothing in BC right now. It's a message that's being sent to business in BC. I recognize the minister, of, the minister is, 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 is troubled by those words, but the reality is business in BC has, has heard the message, you're either with us on LNG or we're not interested in where you're going. And that is the signal, because the, the government here is pick, picking winners and losers in the marketplace. A so-called free enterprise government, Honourable Speaker, picking winners and losers in the marketplace. The winner they've picked is LNG. But it's even worse than that, Honourable Speaker. It's not winners and losers. It's winning company and losing companies, because we see legislation at the scale of individual municipalities. Municipality and, and, and uh, we're, we're amending the Municipalities Enabling and Validating Act to allow the District of Port Edwards to enter multi year agreements with Pacific Northwest LNG. Honourable Speaker, what is going on here? We have, we're introducing law so that a municipality can forget the rest of the, the law that's applied to municipalities in the province so that they can negotiate and, and do special deals with one company. We're picking the winning technology in the winning sector, 
and we're picking the winning company. British, this is no longer a government that has any credibility on its most speaker, speaker as a free enterprise government. This is a government that is really a pick a winner and loser government, and they're picking losers uh, uh, as we go along, and it's continuing to, to manifest itself with this legislation. To be able to have this agreement last up to 25 years and establish an amount or formula to be used for the duration of that agreement for one company may give business certainty for that one company. Sure, Pacific Northwest is going to have business certainty, and we all know business needs certainty, but this is giving an intergenerational sellout at the same time. There's no certainty for British Columbians here. This government was elected to represent British Columbians, not elected to represent Pacific Northwest Natural Gas and Petrona and market that company to British Columbians, which is what is happening here in this legislation. There are many other examples in this. I have another a couple on this particular section. You know, we, we see um, Port Edward being given the power to set a unique tra uh, tax rate for Pacific Northwest LNG that could be different from other Class 4 properties. Now, we're picking one company over another. You want to develop this land to your Class 4 property, guess what? If you're LNG, it's one thing. If you're forestry, you're another. It's, this is sending a message to industry that you are either want to do industry in BC, you're with LNG. We'll do anything we can for you, but if you're a struggling industry in another sector, Honourable Speaker, yeah, maybe not. It's LNG or nothing here in British Columbia. A government that has the audacity to claim leadership on climate, the audacity for a Premier to be invited by the World Bank and to claim in this province that she is leading a government that has leadership on climate policy does nothing but make the government of British Columbia a laughingstock with incredible people across Canada. Because this government has no credibility on the issue of climate policy. It was the previous administration under the leadership of Mr. Campbell and the leadership of Barry Penner, the Environment Minister, that built that credibility that this government has destroyed in the matter of two and a half short years. Now, I recognize the Minister of Health did his bit. He was, a, he was a very fine Minister of Environment when he was there, but he's no longer there. The Minister of Environment is doing what she can. But unfortunately, they are but a few within a caucus of many who are doing everything they can to unravel the leading climate policy that existed in this province. The truth does hurt, Honourable Speaker. I, when, the, when the members' offices start heckling, they recognize that the truth does, does hurt. The truth to, 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 to try to claim leadership on greenhouse gas emissions. The Minister of Health suggests I'm losing credibility by telling the truth. I would suggest to the Minister that the government has lost credibility. The government has lost credibility by not telling the truth. For two years, Honourable Speaker, you can check my page, andrewweavermla.ca. It's there from December 2012. Uh, that's on Facebook prior to the election during the campaign. But I said the same thing about LNG. I haven't changed my tune. The government has $500 million, $100 billion prosperity fund, a trillion dollar hit to GDP, debt-free BC, no PST, thriving schools and hospitals, la, 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 come to BC. We'll tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear. And unfortunately, here we are in BC with yet another generational sellout happening before us. Subsection 4B, Honourable Speaker, exempts agreements from cabinet regulations that prescribe limits on tax rates, relationships between tax rates, formulas for calculating tax rates, and so on. Section 4C, another exemption for PNW properties, allows um, um, an exemption for them being prescribed as portland under the Assessment Act. And that, again, means that cabinet regulations that prescribe that actual value of the Portland or the established rates, formulas, rules or, or principles for determining the actual value of the Portland would not apply. Let's just throw that out because it might not give a company certainty. Subsection 4D exempts P&W properties under an agreement from the Ports Property Tax Act. We wouldn't want to tax LNG, which generally outlines property tax provisions for ports. You know, whose needs are actually being served here, Honourable Speaker? Is it British Columbia's needs? Is this government that is voted and tasked to represent British Columbians and, and provide the oversight that British Columbians want? Or is it the winner that they've chose in the winning sector 
in an economy, in a market that's falling, and when other jurisdictions are diversifying their economy, we are not. Honourable Speaker, the Community Charter was written to provide fairness and a level playing field for businesses. This Act, Honourable Speaker, seems to empower Port Edward to create an unplayer, un, unfair playing field. Honourable Speaker, it gets worse with the Royalty Agreement section in Section 44 to Section 66. Sections 44 through 66 have received a lot of focus already, as they appear to be particularly troubling. They appear, Honourable Speaker, to allow the Minister to enter into royalty agreements with natural gas, natural gas producers. The Minister can enter into an agreement without approval from the Lieutenant Governor and Council if the, if, the agreement, if the agreement is, and I quote, in respect of a prescribed class of agreements, whatever that means. There are several concerning points here, Honourable Speaker. The entire purpose of this section appears to be allow this government, a government that's lost credibility on the LNG file, if it ever had any in the first place, to lock future government into royalty agreements without offer it, offering as much as any way of oversight or checks and balances to protect British Columbians from, frankly, irresponsible decision-making that is ongoing in British Columbia today on this file. We already have a royalty regime in place. The problem, of course, is that, as far as the government is concerned and perhaps industry is concerned, this royalty regime may not be cert certain in future governments. Perhaps the government is worried. Perhaps the government is worried that in 2017 the BC Green Party will be sitting over there and they'll be sitting over here. There'll be a lot of my friends to the right over there, a few of you uh, over here. Perhaps they're worried about that and they want to give Petronas some, some, or, or PNW some certainty by locking in 25-year royalty rates at some rate that is to be prescribed at some point by a minister if he or she wants with some consultation, maybe, maybe not, who knows, because we're not going to be actually um, bringing this uh, in a, in open forward in a very public fashion. You know, the powers that have been given to the minister in this amendment act with respect to royalty creation in the natural gas sector are enormous. And what not only are they enormous, they're enormous powers to one minister, Honourable Speaker. Not the minister in the next government or the government after that, but the minister in this government a minister who is part of a government that is so desperate to fulfil their irresponsible election promises that the media are not going to start probing on. They may have given the government a few years of grace on this, but mark my word, when people start looking into this, it's going to come a cropper if it's not already starting to. This, Honourable Speaker, is egregious what's going on in this, in this particular amendment. Under the changes, the Minister also has to disclose information that would be required to be disclosed under the Freedom of Information and Privacy Protection Act. However, the section in here does not clarify who determines if the information needs to be disclosed or not. It's an is it an independent body that's at arm length, arm's length from the Ministry? Or could the Minister theoretically decide what should be or should not be disclosed? It's not clear. There are other aspects of this um, act that I'll just very brief, briefly, uh, uh, briefly speak to that I'd be uh, interested in exploring further at committee stage. That's with respect to the oil and gas activities changes, section 51, where we have E1 and E2 to um, include two, act, two types of activities, uh, oil and gas activities, um, and these are the construction and operation of a manufacturing plant to design designed to convert natural gas into or other organic compounds, and the construction or operation of a petroleum refinery. Honourable Speaker, again, it's seeming to me, in light of the fact that I know of one proposal that's been brought to government on E1 and one proposal that's been brought to government on E2, the government again is getting forward and trying to pick winners and losers in a marketplace before actually having the letting the market decide who those winners and losers should be. I'm curious about what the government's intending here, and I will indeed, Honourable Speaker, sp uh, speak to it at, 
uh, committee stage. With that, Honourable Speaker, I do thank you for the time. I look forward to further discussions in committee stage. At this point, I have, uh, I, I, it, I'm still in a quandary with respect to the vote at second reading, not because I support everything in it, but I'm not sure at this point, and I still need time to reflect on its, whether or not the merits of supporting it at second reading or not supporting it at second reading are more on the positive or negative. Clearly, the egregious royalty and Port, um, Port Edward changes that are the government desperately trying to pick winners and losers in the marketplace to fulfill election promises are unsupportable. Obviously, I support the BC Medal, Medal of Good Citizenship. Again. <laughs> Again. Um, it's already been on the books for nearly 20 years, and the irony of this, of course, Honourable Speaker, yeah, must, I mean, again, it's, it's one of these priceless moments that you get in this place in the legislature after listening as an independent here um, for, for, for two years of in the 1990s this and the 1990s that. Well, one of the things that happened in the 1990s, Honourable Speaker, is this medal of BC, medal of good citizenship, was brought into place. So I, obviously I support that. Obviously there are other aspects in this, some um, uh, updating of various acts I, I support. But these two, these two changes are very, very troubling. And with that, Honourable Speaker, I'll, I'll pass and uh, look forward to hear the continuing debates.